As wrestling fans, we like to look ahead. We like to look to the future. And that's why kind of what I've set out to do with this video here is look ahead to the 2015 Money in the Bank pay-per-view and kind of go through some of the options the WWE has in terms of who they could potentially have win it. And I'm going to go through 10 different options from 10 to number one, with number one being the guy that I think is the most likely option and the guy that will end up being the 2015 Money in the Bank winner. I'll start off at another, number 10 with Neville. Uh, I don't particularly think he has much of a chance. However, you never know with the WWE because sometimes they might like to pull one over on you or shock the world, if you will. And they've done that before. Go back to Daniel Bryan winning it in 2011, CM Punk winning it at WrestleMania 24. You know, these were situations where these were surprise victories. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. However, I don't perceive it to be particularly likely. You have Rusev. Here's a guy that was on a big, massive, undefeated, dominant streak for a long period of time until, of course, he ran into the Cena monster at WrestleMania. Here's a guy that's a heel. The WWE prefers their Money in the Bank winner to be heels, always have, and probably always will be, and maybe the dynamics of being a Money in the Bank holder work better as a heel, I'll grant you. However, with Rusev, is he really the type of guy that you want carrying the Money in the Bank? That's number one. Number two, it seems like they're trying to go splitsville with him and Lana, so what good does it do to have this guy be the Money in the Bank winner if he might potentially not even have his mouthpiece with him? And number three, if they haven't been bothered to feature Rusev much post-WrestleMania, what the hell makes me think that they're going to have any interest in him at all come summertime? Um, you got somebody like Wade Barrett. There's always somebody that kind of stands out as a logical choice for a Money in the Bank win. Here's a guy with the type of size the WWE typically has coveted over the years. He's a guy that has a certain type of following. Here's a guy that can talk on the microphone. Here's a guy that seems, in theory, to be more natural as a heel. So a lot of things that work for being a Money in the Bank winner. However, you have that injury history with Wade Barry. You don't really know if you could count on him or not. Furthermore, you're talking about a guy that's been around for almost five years now. It's kind of almost time for WWE to shit or get off the pot with him. And I'm not really sure that they're that sold on Wade Barris. I don't think he's a very likely option either. You always have Randy Orton and John Cena. When it involves anything big, you always have to factor in the Breakfast Club. However, you've got John Cena doing his thing with the United States title right now, so I don't really think they want to interject into that, the Money in the Bank briefcase. But again, with Cena, anything is possible. Similar with Randy Orton. Now, you're sitting there and you're doing it with him going against Rollins right now, so would you really want to re-inject him right back into the title picture come summertime? Because a guy like Orton, again, would you really want him to have a briefcase for an extended period of time? And he just recently won Money in the Bank not too long ago. I don't know if they want to go back down that route again. You always have The Miz as an option, another former Money in the Bank winner, similar to Randy Orton, similar to John Cena. Here's a guy that you could make an argument for because a lot of what The Miz is fits perfectly for that Money in the Bank briefcase, and he's a good guy to have as that Money in the Bank holder. However, I'm just not sure at this moment in time if he's necessarily the best option that they could go with, especially from the heel side of the fence. And where it's similar to a Wade Barrett, where you might even have to explore doing a babyface turn with him winning the briefcase. Or if you did Randy Orton, you might have to go right back to a heel turn with a Miz winning it. You would you really sit there and think about going to a baby face? Uh, I don't think so. And in terms of being a heel, uh, I, I just think there are better options. I think there are four guys that the WWE will ultimately truly be deciding between come Money in the Bank 2015. The first one is Roman Reigns. Now, when we talk about that transition from one side to the other and using Money in the Bank as an effective transition to that other side of the fence, Roman Reigns is a guy that would definitely fit into that category. And here's a guy similar to Alberto Del Rio that, you know, perceived big monster push, even though I would argue ADR got more of a force than Roman Reigns did, won the Royal Rumble, failed to win the belt at WrestleMania, came back and won the Money in the Bank and cashed in at SummerSlam. 
and with Roman Reigns and what you could potentially be setting up to between Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar come SummerSlam, there could potentially be some appeal here in terms of having Roman Reigns be the money in the bank holder and go in and cash in at SummerSlam and be the new champion out of the show and throw a whole bunch of things into chaos, potentially a Rollins babyface turn at the same time that you'd be executing a Roman Reigns heel turn and aligning him with the authority. These are options, and these could work. And they could work very, very well. However, I'm not sold that the WWE thinks that a heel turn for Roman Reigns is the right way to go. We know that the WWE will occasionally give us what we want, but they will also give it to us the way they want to give it to us. Or, on the flip side of that, they will sit there and say, screw you, we're going to do this anyways. We want you to cheer for him. We're going to force you to cheer for him. When you boo him on a recorded show, we are going to pipe in cheers anyway. So, I think they're going to dig in their heels stubbornly and refuse to turn Roman Reigns heel. As a result, him as a babyface Money in the Bank winner doesn't necessarily hold a lot of water. Again, there isn't a whole lot of appeal because I think one of the things you have to do with the Money in the Bank winner, unless he's going to cash in relatively quickly, is you have to have a guy that can talk, that can carry that briefcase. So then you get to another former compatriot of the Shield, and that is Dean Ambrose. Now, there are a lot of things about Dean Ambrose that scream out to me, this guy should be a Money in the Bank winner. Here's a guy that is really over with the fans. Here's a guy that kind of plays the middle of the fence a little bit. So as a result, it can work with him being a Money in the Bank winner without having to turn him full-fledged heel. However, on the flip side of that, the WWE would probably look at the Dean Ambrose and say, well, we'll give you something that you want, Dean Ambrose winning Money in the Bank, but we're going to do it our way and we're going to try and go against the grain and try and force you to boo this guy because now we want you to boo this guy because that's just how we fuck with you. You know, Dean Ambrose carrying that briefcase could work out very well, even again when we point to SummerSlam. We're talking about if you've got, again, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins, you could always go back to the Ambrose-Rollins feud. I mean, that worked really, really well last year. Now you could sit there and do it this time for the title. You know, there, there, there are options here, and now you are instantly launching and validating another member of the Shield, and now all you've got to do is do it with Roman Reigns, and you've made the Shield one of the most effective long-term factions in the history of the WWE. However, I'm just not that sold on the WWE being that sold on Dean Ambrose yet to where they feel that he's quite ready to be a main event player um, going forward. They might get there at some point. I'm just not buying it yet, even though I think the type of performer and character that Ambrose is and the skills that he brings to the table would be perfectly suited for a Money in the Bank win, especially because, again, being a Money in the Bank winner, a big part of that is being able to carry yourself on the microphone, and we most certainly know that Dean Ambrose can do that. Now we get to number two, and that to me is going to be Bray Wyatt. Now here is obviously somebody that can carry himself very well on the microphone. Here's a guy that the WWE obviously believes in to a certain degree because the last two years at WrestleMania, he's went up against John Cena and The Undertaker. And they don't just throw that out there to anybody. That means that they envision big things for Bray Wyatt. That means that they believe in Bray Wyatt to a certain degree. That means that the WWE believes Bray Wyatt could be some type of star. And while, yes, he lost both of those matches at WrestleMania, and that doesn't help the equation in terms of making the guy a big star, here's a guy that has wrestled John Cena and The Undertaker at back-to-back -back WrestleManias. You know, again, that's not a joke. That's not chump change. That means it's serious, and that means they take this guy serious. And when you look at his character, and you're talking about part of the thing of being a Money in the Bank winner is the ability to cash in at a time of your choosing anywhere within the next calendar year. You're talking about a character here in Bray Wyatt where playing those mind games, playing with that element of surprise could work tremendously well. And here's a guy that they can feature with different promos and stuff without having to sit there and feature him every single week. However, when it comes to Bray Wyatt, you do have a bit of a problem here in terms of being able to take him seriously. Because you could sit there and talk about face of fear and this and that. But if he doesn't beat the big guys, like the Cena's and the Takers, then what the hell makes us think that he could sit there and be a legitimate you know, WWE World Heavyweight Champion at this point? That does matter. Wins and losses do matter when you're talking about building up a character. 
And I'm also concerned about the WWE in terms of how much they actually believe in a Bray Wyatt and how they would actually book him as a champion. It may be at this point in time that Bray Wyatt is better as a top guy character than a top guy champion, if that makes any sense. You could point to maybe Taker in the mid-90s. He was well-established a top guy. You know, he may have been arguably the top guy. But he didn't necessarily work the best as a champion. He didn't. You know, because of the character, because of the way he was presented, because of the way he was featured, because of his style, it was better just to have him in a big role, but not have him be that guy with that title. Which brings me to number one, and the guy that to me right now is the runaway leader in the clubhouse, I don't know if everybody will agree with me or not, but I think the runaway leader in the clubhouse to be the 2015 Money in the Bank winner has to be Sheamus. There's a reason that they ran weeks of vignettes for Sheamus's return. It's because the WWE loves this guy. The WWE believes in this guy. The WWE, frankly, has a hard-on for this guy. And now that they have turned him heel, they believe in him even more. I always thought Sheamus could work really well as a babyface. However, based off of the WWE's booking, Sheamus most certainly cannot work as a babyface. But now that you've got Sheamus as a heel, and you could get the hardcore fans to actually boo Sheamus as a heel because they feel like he's being forced. They don't particularly like him. They think his look is stupid and everything else. Here's a perfect chance to have a kind of unanimously hated heel similar to what you have in The Miz. But a guy unlike The Miz that could be taken seriously. Here's a guy that you could believe could beat a Randy Orton. Here's a guy that you could believe could beat a John Cena. Here's a guy that you could believe could potentially give a run to Brock Lesnar. And there's always that Lesnar matzo ball that's hanging out there. And now that you've got Sheamus as a heel, it might be the perfect time to build him up into a Money in the Bank winner because, frankly, you have a lot more compelling and appealing options in my mind, in my opinion, with Sheamus as the Money in the Bank winner. You could sit there and have him feud with Roman Reigns. You could sit there and have him feud with Dean Ambrose. You could sit there, potentially, if you do a babyface turn with Seth Rollins, and have him feud with Seth Rollins. You could most certainly have him feud with a Brock Lesnar. When you look at Sheamus, here's a guy that is going to get a lot of heel heat and the right type of heel heat at a time where the WWE, frankly, needs some top heels. Brock Lesnar is a babyface now and out of the equation for the next several months. John Cena is a face. Randy Orton is a face. Roman Reigns is a face. Dean Ambrose is a face. And at this point in time, outside of Lesnar, you're looking at Orton and Cena and Reigns and Ambrose Outside of maybe Reigns, you could make an argument that having any of those guys winning the Money in the Bank briefcase probably means that they have to turn heel. Well, they're not turning Cena heel. It doesn't make sense to turn Orton heel when you just turned him face. And Ambrose turning him heel would just be an example of the WWE fucking with you as fans and trying to go against the grain. Roman Reigns could work, but I don't think that that's the best way to go at this particular time. For so long, this company has struggled to find popular, you know, top guys on the babyface side. And while some of you will definitely dispute whether or not Roman Reigns is a popular top babyface, the fact is, I think still at this moment, especially if you're not putting him at the very top, he can work better as a face as, than he can as a heel. I don't think the timing is right. But you've already went there with Sheamus. You've already made him heel. And at a time where you need a top heel to work with some of these faces outside of Bray Wyatt, you know, the only other option, I think, in my opinion, has to be Sheamus. You've already gone away from Rusev. You're not going to go that far with The Miz. And I'm not even sold that you'd know what to do if you're the WWE with Bray Wyatt as a Money in the Bank winner and potentially a champion. You need a guy in Sheamus that can win that Money in the Bank briefcase cash in successfully, be a believable heel world champion that gets the right type of heel reaction that can work with some guys that he hasn't really worked with before. And when I look at all other things being equal, I think the right choice, the right option to win the 2015 Money in the Bank briefcase has to be Sheamus. It needs to happen. It has to happen. And that's my opinion, fella. Well, you can let me know whether I'm talking out of my arse or if you agree with me that Sheamus is the hands-down choice to win the 2015 Money in the Bank briefcase, let me know all that in the comments section below.